All right, guys, before I show you how we ended up here, I just wanted to say that I know this episode has been a long time coming. We haven't uploaded in a few weeks, but this project has just been like a lot of work and massive. There's so much that goes on that I sort of didn't even think about before. Um, not just in terms of the work itself, but all the stuff like making sure we're going to be able to get it registered, making sure it's the engineer's going to be able to approve things, like doing it all legal and then also organising parts, making sure everything's going to be here in time. It's just a lot of work. Um, so hopefully you can bear with us um, if there's a bit of a break between episodes, but we're sort of filming this on the fly and uploading as we go. So pretty much where you see it on the internet is where I'm up to. So we're not that far ahead. Yeah, so it's gonna be a long process, but stick with us because I'm sure things will start to ramp up once we sort of get into the further stages of the build and we'll be able to put stuff out a lot quicker and get the ball really rolling. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's been a lot of work and, but you know, I'm proud of what's happening and what I've been doing. So hope you enjoy it too. Cheers guys. All right guys, welcome back to Aussie Arvos. Today we're finally getting stuck into the build. We've got a lot to do, so I'm not gonna waste any time beating around the bush. We're just gonna get stuck into it, start pulling this chassis apart, getting rid of everything we don't need so we can get it ready to be painted. Luckily for me, there weren't too many things that needed to be pulled off this chassis, just a few basic things like hard lines, including brake lines and fuel lines, as well as a fuel tank and a few other fuel lines and some small electrical cables. So I'm going to cut off the back wagon mounts. Obviously we don't need them going on a ute, we only need the front three. So the back two are getting zinged off. So I've just got the grinder, hammer and cold chisel and I'm just going to, I'm hopefully just going to cut the welds and then with a bit of persuasion from the hammer they should just peel off and then I can clean that with the wire wheel. So just do that. Whenever you are cutting things off your chassis, make sure to not go into the chassis itself. You don't want to be leaving any scores or marks because they will affect the structural integrity of the chassis and could potentially be a problem if you have to do any engineering or things like that. One done. So cab mounts at the back have been cut off. I've cleaned up uh, where there were little bits of the weld. And um, now I'm just gonna give it a good clean uh, with the gurney and degreaser and wire brush. Try to get as much stuff off as I possibly can um, before I'll start wire wheeling sections. Um, and then we can sit the bracing up against the chassis and the tray mounts and see where we've got to go back to bare metal for welding. So yeah, getting through it. So let's give this thing a good clean. Oh. <laughs> ah. All right, so we just finished cleaning up the chassis. Um, we've uncovered a few little things that I, uh, I don't know, probably wasn't expecting. Uh, first, there's a fair bit of rust in the coil towers, like the tops, because these have like a little plate on them. They were filled with dirt and water, and so they've like rusted out pretty bad. It, oh wow, it should be salvageable. Like there's no holes other than the drain holes that were already in there. Um, so if I give that a good wire wheel and some rust converter, I should be able to eliminate most of it. Um, and then the only other thing is the, the whole like underside and side of the chassis is covered in some sort of paint like that's like textured as well. really bad. So they've obviously tried to respray it at some point with something. Um, and they've just done it from under the car. Um, and so it's not on top, but like, I don't know if you can see in here, there's like all these little flakes and stuff and all this stuff we've been peeling off um, because it's just started coming off. So I'm gonna have to pretty much go over the whole chassis and get rid of all of this before we can spray. So yeah, so we'll just get start, start wire wheeling and yeah, see where it takes us. When it came to wire wheeling the chassis, there was actually a lot of surface area to cover. So lucky for me, I had a mate give me a chop out and between the two of us on the grinders, we actually made a pretty quick job of cleaning up the chassis. All right, so we've managed to get 
most of the chassis like sort of grinded back. Like obviously it's not all back to bare metal. We're just trying to get off the majority of that paint stuff that was on there and um, any sort of surface rust really. So I was able to get a bit done thanks to mates, which is all right. We're just gonna, well, end of the day. So I'm just gonna put some of this rust converter on the bits that we have done. Um, and this will just sort of eat away any small rust or like light rust that still is there and it'll also just sort of protect the exposed metal um, until obviously it's ready to be painted. So just gonna go with a brush and pretty much just cover the whole lot. It, it'll also, it is a bit of a um, cleaner. It might help eat away some of that loose crap paint as well. So we're just gonna sort of put it everywhere. So we'll chuck this on and then let it sit overnight. All right, so it's the next day. The chassis was sitting overnight with the rust converter on it. It's actually come up like really good. Um, the surface looks pretty clean. Like obviously not everywhere is back to bare metal, but in terms of just no like rust on the surface, it all looks good. Um, there were a couple spots where the rear tires sit up against the chassis. We couldn't get the grinder in there to wire wheel off that old paint that was sitting on there. Um, so this morning's mission is going to be to pull the front and rear diff out. That way I can get to those spots as well as be able to flip the chassis over um, and then do the underside. And then that'll be all our services done prepped. Then we can move on to welding on uh, chassis bracing and tray mounts. All right, so we've ripped the diffs out. We've flipped the chassis upside down. So now I can access the whole underside for wire wheeling. So now it's just, yeah, more wire wheeling. So I'll just pretty much go over the whole bottom side, um, anywhere I couldn't access when the wheels were still on, and then it should be one step closer to get this thing painted. All right, so I've just finished wire wheeling the bottom of the chassis and all the other little bits that I couldn't reach before. Although it's not back to bare metal, which I don't want it to be, it's pretty good. I've gotten off all, well, pretty much all of the like weird paint that was on it that was like flaking off. I've gotten all that stuff off, which is the stuff I didn't want on there. Um, so with that done, I'm going to give it a quick blow off with compressed air and blow out any more crap that I can. And then we're going to hit it with the rust converter again along the bottom. Uh, let that sit and we'll flip it over and then we can um, wipe it down with a solvent cleaner, the whole chassis. Um, and then we'll start setting up all the chassis bracing and the tray mounts to be welded on. All right, so we're ready now to start marking out where all our tray mounts and chassis bracing has to go on. So I'll show you the kit I've bought. So this is the PSR. Our wagon to Ute chassis conversion kit. From what I've found, they're pretty much the only people that do a kit. Um, like for one, I couldn't even find just tray mounts on their own. And these were the only guys that sold tray mounts or aftermarket ones weld on. Um, and they come, like they only come in the kit with the chassis bracing. So you have to do the chassis bracing as well as the tray mounts, unless you get your own made. Um, but apparently it's that's advised because the wagon chassis uh, don't have the same sort of strength as a ute chassis, so it is advised to do the chassis bracing. Can also help with like chassis flex and stuff like that. So yeah, pretty much what we've got here, we've got our uh, four, like two other side, the tall tray mounts that go at the front. Um, there's the short ones that go at the back of the chassis. Um, and then there's the chassis bracing, which is the plating. So that's like the forward front section. So it's all sort of cut out the suit, so that's where your um, mount is for your lower uh, trailing arm. And then for all your cross members, there's little cutouts where the cross members sit. Um, so there's one of those for either side. And then there's also a little short one that goes at the back on one side. And then there's another little short one for the back of the other side. So yeah, pretty much that's the bracing kit and you've just got to mark out where it all sits and then weld it on. So yeah, that's pretty much the kit, but we can start marking out where it's going to go. I'm pretty much just going to clamp it on where it's got to sit. Um, I'm just going to mark around it with a texter and then I know where I have to um, grind back to bare metal uh, so we can weld. All right, so I've got the chassis all cleared up. Um, I've pretty much just gone around and sat the chassis bracing where it needs to be, marked around it with a chalk, and then gone with the wire wheel and done it all back to bare metal, obviously, so it can be welded. And then pretty much, yeah, it's in the stage where it's cleaned up. So now it's just a matter of clamping it on um, in the position that matched the specs sent by PSR with the kit. Uh, so it's got a bunch of measurements, so it suits the factory tray mounts. Um, so pretty much you just want to make sure this is all in the right spot. It's not something you want all, all over the place, you know, because you want to be able to bolt on a factory tray if you want, or just to meet specifications for load spread, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, we're going to spend a bit on time, a bit of time on this to make sure we get it right. And um, once we've done that and we're all happy with where it's sitting, then we can get the welder out and start tacking it up and getting it secured in place. 
All right, so we just got the chassis racing sitting where we want it. We're just gonna tack it in place first before we do any proper beads. Uh, we just wanna make sure it's all in the right spot and that the chassis mount, uh, the tray mounts are gonna sit right as well. So we'll just tack it on. Um, the welding setup is to, it's a SIG weld, Easy Weld 160, uh, MIG welder, also does stick. Um, and then we got 5.2 Argon Mix gas, pretty standard stuff. Um, for, as for setting up the welder, I've just set it to the steel thickness and the wire thickness that we're using and it just adjusts the um, wire speed and the voltage to suit and we can obviously play with that if we feel it's not quite what we need. So yeah, we'll just get stuck into it and put a few tacks on and get, and get it held in place. Now, I'm not a professional welder by any sense of the word, but when it came to doing stuff like this, I was pretty much just making sure that my settings were right on the welder so that I was gonna get enough penetration and make sure it was all structural. So, luckily the welder made it easy for me to do that, so I just played around with the settings and I managed to get some pretty good welds on. That I was taking my time to make sure that everything was in place where it needed to be, so just making sure both sides measured up the same and had the same distances away from all the different mounts and things, just to make sure that when it came to putting on the tray mounts, everything would line up easily. All right, so that's the chassis bracing tacked on. Um, all went on well and clamped up pretty good. It all, all fits well, so that's good. Um, now that that's clamped both sides, we can go around and start figuring out where the tray mounts are gonna sit. So PSR with the kit, send out um, like a diagram to show you where the factory tray mounts would sit on a factory uh, ute chassis. Um, so it's got dimensions diagonally, uh, width ways, length ways between all the tray mounts. So you can just make sure they're all millimeter perfect. Um, we're probably going to start with, it gives you offsets to the tray mounts from the lower control arm bracket and also from the rear of the chassis. So we'll start from them because they're our known points. Um, and once we get those chassis mounts in place, then we can place the others based on those ones. So we'll start with those outer ones and then work our way in. So the front one sits 88 mil from the eye of the lower control mount. And we can already tell that that's too high. That's got to be cut down. Oakley, Oakley. Mark fits well. That one fits well too. I can there, so I'm there. Right, mark 100. So that's where the center of our body mount should sit. 115 millimeters. So what's that? Uh, 57.25. Which so happens to be right at the center of that circle. That's good. All right, so that's our center mark. So then essentially, that has to sit there. Dang and then all it's a matter of just getting it level and plumb. If you just want to start the water. Yeah, that's good. Before setting up the tray mounts, I made sure to level the chassis itself that's just good, to make sure good. that when I was putting on the tray mounts and using the level across the top, they weren't oh, going to end up there. sitting on an angle when the car was finally sitting on wheels. So definitely make sure the chassis is level as that's the surface you're working on. Yeah, 100%. All right, so we've just been tacking up the tray mounts where they've got to be sitting. Um, it's all been going in pretty well. They've all been actually fitting up very well. We haven't had to modify them really at all. And all the measurements have been lining up well. We've been doing our checks between them all. Um, so we've done the front two and the rear one. There's still another one to go in roughly here, but upon looking at it, it is going to require a little bit more cutting uh, to the mount than these others. These have all pretty much gone in modify free. Um, so we'll have to cut a bit more out of those ones to get them in and sitting level. But um, yeah, they've all been going in sweet. So we'll get those last ones done. And then once we've got it all tacked up, we're happy where everything's sitting. Um, then it'll just be a matter of going over the whole lot uh, and properly welding it. Um, so the bracing and the tray mounts. So yeah, and then once we've done that, then we should be looking very close to getting some paint on. So still a bit to do, but we'll get it done. 
I made sure that when I was doing my final welding that I wasn't focusing too much heat in one area. So after doing a bead on one side, I'd move down to the other end of the chassis or swap sides and just making sure that everything stays cool and doesn't get too hot. All right, so I've been busy working on the chassis. Um, as you can see, everything is now completely welded. Um, so everything's in place, gone around with the MIG and done all the welding necessary in all the right spots. So hopefully everything should be nice and sturdy. Um, I've also done a couple other little things. I'd have to cut off some cross, uh, some body mounts at the back just for, for a wagon, which being a ute I won't need. So cut them off on the cross member. And I've also, while we've got it all bare and easy to access, I've notched the cross member. So for those of you that don't know, it's a bit of a patrol thing. Um, if you have a lot of suspension travel in the rear, uh, you, when you drop right down your suspension, the rear tail shaft can actually hit the cross member and contact. And a lot of people just flip it the other way. So you have the slip joint, which is the thinner end up here and that works. But to do it properly, notch the cross member and then that way you can run it the way the shaft's intended to be placed. And you don't have to worry about it bottoming out on your cross member and making noises and getting dinged up. So we've done that um, and now, I'm pretty confident in saying that all the welding to the chassis uh, that needs to be done before paint can go on is done, I, I believe. So I don't think I've forgotten anything, I hope not, but um, everything should be done. So now it's just a matter of giving it a final clean over and then we'll lay down some paint and uh, we'll be off. So I'll just run through some of the things that I was keeping in mind before I did all this sort of structural welding to the chassis, because um, some of you might not know, but when you do any sort of modifications to the chassis it does have to be engineered uh, any modifications to the chassis so you have to do it all by a certain you know regulations and standards so we got in contact with an engineer um, just to make sure we we're doing it the right way and he pretty much pointed us in the direction of all the uh, roads like guidelines VSB um, guidelines and also the Nissan bodybuilders guides um, which just detail their processes for when they're welding and manufacturing these cars. Um, so there's just a few little things. It's just little things like, as you might notice here, I don't weld on radiuses. Um, and like, for example, the, all the welding on the chassis bracing is like stitched, so it's not a continuous weld. Um, and that's just to allow for, like, you don't want it all fully welded because that's when there's no, it doesn't give it any movement, like, because even though it is steel, it still does want to move a little bit and flex. So they've done that. Um, with the tray mounts, um, I've welded around the backside and then on the uh, ends here that meet against the face of the chassis, I've actually welded both sides. And the reason I've done that is because these tray mounts are designed so that the, the majority of the weight from the tray actually lays on these legs because if you sort of look the where you bolt, it's actually not on top of the chassis uh, if you eye it down. So this is actually the load bearing section of the tray mount. So I've double, uh, I've done both sides welded uh, up here. And then for the top, I've just gone around the outside. I haven't done the inside. And you can look at a lot of tray mounts on different, you know, patrols and land cruisers. And sometimes they only go all the way around the outside. Sometimes they'll do both. It's, so I just did what our PSR recommended. And um, so it should be all sturdy and up to code. All right, so we're ready to spray. We've got the chassis held up with the tractor. Um, we've, me and Paddy went over it with terps, just the whole lot with rags, um, making sure it's as clean as we can get it sort of thing um, in every, every nook and cranny. Um, so I've got the gun set up. This is just like, this is the gun we have here. So this is just a siphon feed. Um, you probably see most people these days use gravity feed, but this is what we've got. So it's what we're working with. The paint is the rust guard. It's an epoxy enamel in uh, satin black. I think it's pretty sort of standard stuff that people use for this sort of thing so I think it, the application should be good and you can spray it on bare metal so I don't have to prime it either. Um, so that's in here. Uh, I've thinned it out 10% um, just to make sure it flows through the gun properly and basically I'm just going to start with, I'm not going to start going over the whole lot, I'm going to start with all the little nooks and crannies so in hard to get places so in under coil tower mounts, um, all in where the body mounts and the radius arms mount, all in here. We're going to go first just with like a spot spray and uh, cover all around there. And then once we've done them, then I'll come back and do all the big sprays along the chassis and I'll sense, set this up to more of a fan. Yeah, and we'll just get a coat on and then we're going to let it dry for like, it's a fair while, it's like 12 hours or something. And then put another coat on. So that'll be tomorrow. But um, yeah, so let's stop messing around and start painting. Thank you. 
Now I've never really sprayed something like this before, but I made sure to do a bit of research online and get a bit of know-how on what to do. So I was pretty much just setting the gun up so it was shooting sort of thin and that way I could make sure I wasn't gonna get any runs and I'd just go over areas multiple times to make sure there was coverage and I didn't have to worry about putting on too much paint and getting some drips. I also made sure to spray the cross member and the steering box to make sure they look all clean and fit in with the chassis. All right, so first coat is down. Um, it all went on really well. Um, yeah, the no runs whatsoever, all sprayed on well. You gotta make sure you get all the little bits like inside of these shock towers and stuff. Like it's a bit, you gotta do a lot of underneath stuff, which can be a bit tricky, but got through it all. I think I've got everywhere that I can see. Obviously we'll be doing a second coat as well. So that's like your top coat. So it'll make it look a bit nicer and then also bring up the thickness a bit, make sure it's um, gonna stay on there good. I'm not gonna show you the second coat cause it's the exact same process. But yeah, so all the chassis stuff should be done. So next we're gonna be turning it into a rolling chassis. So we've got the diffs sitting there, they've been waiting to go under. So we're gonna be chucking them in. We've got all our suspension bits and pieces sitting there waiting to go in. And there's a few cool bits there that I wanna show you guys. So. Yeah, that's the next stage of the build. You know, any suggestions, thoughts? I mean, it's sort of all done now, but you can still tell me whether I stuffed up because I probably did something wrong or not by the book. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with how I've gone for like, this is the first time I've tackled anything sort of this massive. So I'm pretty pleased with how it's all going and come along. So yeah, stay tuned for next episode. It will be coming shortly. And um, you know, let's just keep punching on. We're gonna get this thing done because I'm so keen. So let's do it.